Well, hello there, do hope you're all well. I hope you all had a wonderful weekend. You know me, love Nick Abbott's show, Friday, Saturday, Sunday nights. And uh, you always guarantee when he talks about Brexit, he'll attract the Brexit loons. And even when he doesn't talk about Brexit, he still attracts the Brexit loons. We that be Brian from Stockton and Tees, which uh, he does make appearance here, here, absolute belter, to anywhere around the world, he will still attract the Brexit loons. Here's two of them. Enjoy. 0345 6060 973. Uh, let's have a call in Stockton. Oh, God. Stockton on Tees. Hello, Brian. Yes, hello, Nick. Yes, Brian. Good evening. Oh, look at the you time. See, We've only got a minute. Isn't that... Sh you see, that is a you shame. See John, you see John Claude la last night? O only got a on minute. Only got a minute to talk to you. That That is actually quite mm. sad. No, did you see it? I didn't, know. John Claude. He was calling Ursula von der Leyen. That, now, this, that is the blind leading the blind, isn't it? He was, call why we, he was calling her what? Calling about the... Ex not to ex stop the exports of the vaccine, saying she's wrong. Yeah. And, I mean, this, this bloke was absolutely useless, and he's calling her... It's, it, it's good we got out of this EU, isn't it? They're a pack of clowns. We know they are. They have been for a long time. They're too slow at doing anything. And this bloke, I mean, what, when he turned the, the, the picture off of John Claude Juncker, John Sucher, the interview on Hard Talk, you could see him having a giggle to himself. He was rambling on, a, didn't know what he was on about. And he's calling back from, I mean, she's only a puppet for Macron and Merkel, isn't she? It's not her that's the export. Macron wants to do it in Merkel, really. And she's, she's taking the flack. You just puppets for him. Can't you see that, Nick? We done right to get out, go down a different path. And it's going to be a big success. And you're going to eat your words, mate. <laughs> well, I think, I think eventually words will all, we all will have to eat. Particularly if they don't get that ship moved soon. Will be uh, words for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. But unfortunately, uh, Brian, uh, you are fresh out of words on this show. Isn't that a shame? I I'm distraught. It's 11.30 on LBC, the news headlines with Zora Solomon. It's an educational show, this, isn't it? No. Not really. Let's have um, uh, Christchurch. Phil. Hello. On the subject of contact tasting, yes. Richie Sunak should have another eat out to help out scheme. Oh, cool. Because Europe is dependent on a fat particle which we export to use in their Pfizer vaccine. A fat particle? Uh, yes. It's, it's in some nanoparticle or something, but it's a fat particle, basically. Right. And uh, it's vital to the F Pfizer vaccine. So if Ursula Undermine, or Underwine, or whatever her name is, mm -hmm. wants to play silly buggers, we could play silly buggers and not give them this particle for their Pfizer vaccine. Right. <laughs> Okay, well, you, that, you've uh, obviously given that a lot of thought, to Phil. And as soon as any other thought occurs to you, I want you to let me know straight away. So, um, I say we uh, export the, uh, a fat particle. I'm thinking of one right now. Hey, Bodger. I, I can't comment on that. I, 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 I think there's at least one fat particle that we could do without. Put it in a crate. Pop it over. Why not? You're welcome. Thank you. Gerald in Bristol says, uh, only two comedians have ever, ever ruffled their hair before going into character, Boris Johnson and Ken Dodd. That's exactly right. Ken Dodd used to do the exact same thing. It's, part, it's his act. That's the reason why his uh, popularity goes uh, ever upwards, because people have bought into his act. And, uh, like I said before, there's a significant number of people in this country who... For, uh, and it's not a relatively new phenomenon. It's... Uh, I guess it is relatively new. People do yearn for a dictator to come in and really stick it to the Liberals. Small L. Stick it to people who keep reminding them that, uh, you know, things aren't going particularly well and they might not have uh, made the right choices in life. The people who, who grumble, you lost, get over it. <laughs> As they look at their ruined future. 
How's the, the fishing industry doing, uh, by the way? Uh, a, a, any comments, Nige? I'm a nutcase. Anything at all? The UK public is increasingly disenchanted with MPs and government and ever more willing to welcome the idea of authoritarian leaders who would ignore Parliament. A long-running survey of attitudes to politics has shown. This is a survey last of, uh, no, from two years ago, before COVID. Amid the Brexit chaos, overall public faith in the political system reached a nadir not previously seen in the 16-year history of the Hansard Society's audit of political engagement, lower even than at the depths of the crisis over MPs' expenses, which seems like small beer today, don't it? Nothing at all. Almost three quarters of those are said the system of governance needed significant improvement and other attitudes emerged that challenged the core tenets of our democracy. The authors or the audits authors stated the study compiled annually by the democracy charity found that when people were asked whether quotes britain needs a strong ruler willing to break the rules 54 percent agreed only 23 percent said no i've been saying this for a good long while i didn't realize that there was actual real life information numbers yet I just got a sense of it, you know, from talking to people on the phone. I did feel, and, I, and I've said this uh, out loud on the air, and, and precious few people have disagreed with me, really. Maybe no, one, <laughs> no one's actually listening. Correct. But I do get the feeling that there's a significant number of people who want a strong-arm dictator to come in and lock those people up who are traitors, who are saying things against this government, and that is traitorous. You know, those people. That's why the government are wrapping themselves in the flag, is because they want it to appear to their fans as though to disagree with the government is to attack the country. Even if what you're doing is trying to save the country by uh, attacking the government. I mean, if you're living in a country now where you're not allowed to protest, where the government has given itself the right to eliminate all protests it doesn't like the sound of, then I think that that's, I think the point at which we should become alarmed has, is in the rear view mirror. But, you know, we've got a guy at the front who's uh, got funny hair and uh, he boggles his eyes and he grin, grins a lot. He's always with a smirking. The, the whole lot of them have got a smirk on their face that's permanent. And, and I've, no, I've said this before, but I think it's because they know they're getting away with it. They're getting extra points. 42% of respondents agreed that the, uh, agreed uh, with the idea that many national problems could be dealt with more effectively if the government didn't have to worry so much about votes in Parliament. 42%. And you think, you, you look at, uh, you know, South American uh, dictatorship, you, you look at uh, America with what it's just uh, recently gone through. I can be more presidential than anybody. And you think, wow, well, that'll never happen here. It's happening here. We, the public are already on side. All they need is the right person to come along. Maybe the right person has come along. Here we go, 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 okay. I mean, I can't remember who said it, but um, they were very wise and prescient. And they said that, uh, you know, fascism does not kick the door in with, uh, with big heavy boots wearing a long leather coat. They come in with a smile and say that they want to make the country great again. And they want to protect you from people who want to attack you. And that bloke over there has taken your biscuit. I'm going to get it back for you. That's how they come in, as your friend. And if, they, if they've if they got a funny act as well, well, that's all to the good. This is not a new thing. It's not a new phenomenon with Boris and the current administration. And, and nor is it a new phenomenon with Trump. It exists already in large numbers, in worryingly large amounts among the general population. We want a dictator. 
to stick it to the enemy, who are those among us that disagree with how we think and act. I'm alarmed. How about you? A little bit. <laughs> I don't think you were even talking about Brexit. Whatever. It's just that Brian brought it up, rings up, desperate for a fight. To be honest, he didn't even have a fight with him. He just basically let him ramble on his in and drivel. But I must admit, I thought, Phil, he's got to be an actor there. I have absolutely no idea what he was prattling on about. He was absolutely going on about utter nonsense, which must be the Brextremist manner, I suppose. Once Phil had finished prattling on his inane rubbish, I was just waiting for the perfect time to stop the video. Then it went on the ramblings about um, authoritarianship and stuff like that, and I found, found myself absolutely just drawn in, and I was listening with bated breath, and... I thought it was absolutely brilliant because now you've seen the conclusive proof there that the evidence is there that people want to be ruled by an authoritarian government. Absolutely flabbergasting. Now, I think like a few of us, we've sort of like um, had this suspicion for a while. But when you heard the statistics there, you thought, oh my God. I was just absolutely gobsmacked. Anyway, I shall leave the video here and uh, I shall bid you farewell until the next time. Take care.